Welcome to MQC, the Massachusetts Quad Ball Chat for off-pitch chats with Carson and Sierra. I'm going to be starting this week again with a recap of this last weekend. So it was just a two-game series with Middlebury and Tufts, with Middlebury going 2-0. Uh, game 1 was 175 Middlebury, 50, or 70 Tufts. Game 2 was 140 Middlebury with 54 Tufts. Yeah, um, I think Tufts started out the day uh, stronger than they finished. Um, in game one, after 20 minutes, um, the quad ball score was fairly even with uh, Middlebury scoring four and Tufts scoring three. So they played each other pretty well, I think, after 20. Um, and then Middlebury got a grab from Tom Nevins, um, which put them, you know, square enough ahead to take the victory. Um, and then in game two, we saw kind of, you know, I think, energy hitting tufts um with depth and things like that they didn't score after 20 minutes so like going forward i think their conditioning will be something to carry on through the rest of the season yeah i think for tufts like even though it is two losses i, I think we talked about this like last week or the week before like even with losses some teams i think it is about like showing improvement in skills and so i think with tufts like it's a good example of like you might not have won but there are still things to be like happy about um for Millbury, I feel like it's kind of, you know, the same game that they've been playing all semester. They're pretty shorthanded, too. Um, and so a lot of it flows to, like, Jason Wu and Kate Petty. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, it's it's kind of the same game that it has been for them. Um, honestly, not a whole lot to, to talk about the recap this week. Mostly going to be focused on looking ahead for what is coming. So this upcoming weekend, Saturday, March 16th, uh, Brandeis is going to be hosting RPI and Brown for the start of D1 Champion Bowl games. Uh, so how it's going to work this weekend is RPI and Brandeis are going to play a best of three. So Brandeis is the number two in D1 for um, MQC. RPI is the number three. They're going to play a best of three before going into a round robin with Brown. So Brandeis and RPI will both just play Brown. Um, the event's going to be starting at 10 a.m. at Brandeis' Club Fields, uh, if you're interested in going. Um, obviously, it will be live streamed as well um, on the MQC Facebook page, which brings us to actually talking about the weekend and how we think it's going to go. Some thoughts on the teams. Do you want to kick us off? Yeah, I think an interesting storyline this weekend is all of three of these teams are coached by RPI alums. <laughs> Yes, as an RPI alum myself, um, it is fun. So RPI coached by Sam Nielsen, Nielsen uh, Brandeis by Tyler Beckman, and then Brown by Eric Berglund. Maybe Teddy Costa, I'm not <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, parentheses, asterisk, not sure on that one. Um, I, I've heard differing things, I think, about his involvement. Um, but yeah, so excited to see, you know, who from RPI has kind of gotten their team into the the best playing shape, um, see who wins that. Um, but we'll start with the the ball game, since that's kind of the, the bigger one, to really see who's going to be taking on Harvard, um, kind of, I think, post-USQ uh, Nationals. So it's going to be Brandeis versus RPI. Um, throughout this year, they played once at opener when it was unofficial, and RPI won that game. They played again in the fall. Um, at a round robin at RPI, and I think RPI lost with 40 to Brandeis' 145. Um, I think both teams look a lot different than they did in the fall when that's happened, and I don't believe that they have played since that. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you have any thoughts on like. Yeah, how I think looking. since then, a difference maker is going to be how RPI has figured out how to play Anson Decker. I think he's been huge for them in their past couple of round robins, especially in their BU game a couple weeks ago. So seeing how he stacks up against as a more developed player against Brandeis will be very interesting to see. Yeah, I feel like Anson is somebody who, like, when you're watching, if you've, like, ever seen him, he's just, like, incredibly tall um, and played football at RPI for a little bit. And so for me, it was always like, oh, why is he not just, like, driving in, you know, if I was, like, 6'4 and like had the, the physicality to do it i'd do it in a heartbeat um and this last time that they played in the bu emerson rpi round robin he was doing that um and i don't know how you feel about this but i kind of feel like when it comes to the beaters across all three teams but really brandeis rpi i think it's going to be pretty evenly matched 
Um, I think like Ben Lambright and Emily Braun, um, the two of them have looked good for Brandeis. Um, I think it's a little tough because I think the first time we saw them was coming out against Harvard, which is definitely, you know, a bit tough. Um, just given the talent. That, yeah, a bit. <laughs> um, and so curious to see like how they can kind of, you know, change what they did. I think a lot of it was like they'd win some duels here and there and then just wouldn't press off of it. And so I'd really like to see them, I think, just get a little bit more aggressive um, on that front. And RPI, when they played most recently too, it was a lot of like one and a half sets. And I think more just trying to like hold on to what they had, not, you know, give up any fast breaks on the, the other way. Um, but I don't know from a chaser perspective who you think. Yeah, I think um, in the chaser game, I think, Aside from Anson, they're pretty like evenly size matched, I'd say. I think that RPI maybe has some more standout names who are maybe flashier, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Brandeis' players aren't just as good, even if maybe they're not making the cool play, maybe they're making the right play, mm -hmm. which doesn't always look cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think one thing for me with both of these teams, and I, I know we've talked about this, I feel like they like, to your point, they have a lot of names, but it never seems that they're all together. They're never on the field together, yeah. all of them. Yeah, and so like I get splitting talent, but I feel like going into nationals, it really is more about like who are who is like the best line you could put on, and then these are people who are gonna get some more like depth minutes in either you know a situation where they're giving their starters like maybe like a three minute break or. You know, they're literally just there to play in some easier games. So that way, like, your starters have, like, a chance to catch a break. And so I'd really, for, I feel like both Brandeis and RPI like to see a line of, like, their four heavy hitters. So, like, RPI, I think it's a little weird. But I feel like, yeah, like, Anson, now that he's kind of coming into his own, you know, you have Ad Ojo there. Um, just a plethora of, like, female chasers to pick from. They have, like, Vivian, uh, or Viviana, my bad. Um, they have a Vivian, too. Um, Justine and Isabella all to pick from. I would honestly say I think they look best when they have at least two of them on the field. I think Isabella and Justine work very well in like a cutting and like taking space kind of system. And so maybe having like those four just like get some cohesion, you know, start to like figure out how they want to run an offense. And then you still have Viviana and Ben on the bench who can come in and just add some like longer term stability in a game. And then Brandeis, I don't know if you have like a group you think i mean i think their like top player overall is definitely eli i think their offense just runs through him i think on a line with him i think him and shakti could have sworn work really well together shakti in a predominantly off ball position i think felicity um Hyams, i think is her last name i think she's been playing really really well lately i'd like to see her on that line and then maybe oh i don't like Caitlin maybe or Brady or some like some somebody yeah <laughs> you know a fourth person one of the other talented <laughs> <laughs> one of the other talented people who don't do the cool things all the time but do the right things all the time yeah I especially feel like I know you brought up Felicity I think she'd be a pretty good addition because like from this last weekend two weeks ago two weeks ago Brandis was primarily running in transition and so I think if they can kind of keep that alive she's really fast you know has a, a shot is like good at taking you know the the space running a lane on a fast break and so i think like having that would be also very good for a team that likes to run in transition um i think though one of Brandeis's key to success is not getting cards especially when you're put in high pressure situations of needing to stop an anson and add a ben paul for a, a viviana estrada like who like once you need to make a hit it's can you make it cleanly and i think brandeis has struggled to make clean contact specifically and so seeing how they kind of really prepare for cup because this is i think the last time both of these teams are playing before cup at least officially i think at least in mqc maybe they're going maybe to otherwise. other stuff i'm not i'm not up to date on their stuff. so sessions. like this is this is like could be the last potential like game rep look opportunity for these teams so i think taking these games very seriously with regards to how they want to do it cup is going to be a key storyline this weekend yeah and 
not in any way meaning to diminish the hype of the ball game, but I'm almost more, I feel like, excited for what comes after. So, like, mm. it's going to be two games at minimum, maybe a third if they split the first two with Brandeis and RPI, then having to come in and play Brown. And I feel like given how Brown did against Brandeis two weekends ago, I don't think either team is probably going to be looking forward to then having to go right into playing their third game against Brown. Um, yeah, I just think like that's kind of a tough draw. Whoever has to play the three back-to-backs. The immediate, yeah. yeah. I think it's going to be really interesting to see if Brown also has their full roster this weekend because if they come in well-rested off of onto two teams that have played two to three games already two to three probably very high intensity games knowing these teams you know how are they going to match them when they don't like brown has their legs under them at this point they've had a big breakfast they're ready to go (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think to your point with brandeis right brown also a team that got into a bit of card trouble i know Two weekends ago, there were a lot of fouls between the Brandeis and Brown game. And then even before then, I know Brown had a red card at some point for three yellows Mm -hmm. that stacked. And so I do think it is just like mitigating some of the damage there. Because I do think a lot of times with cards, it is like, you know, you're building momentum. One of your players gets a card, they score, and that like really can kill so much. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, hopefully, you know, to your point as well, they have a full roster. I know we were really hyping up. Um, some players who didn't end up going um, to the, the Brown <laughs> Brandis game. So always unfortunate there. Um, but yeah, I also just think like getting to see these two teams play in like tight and tough situations and really getting to like come up with a game plan is going to be so huge for Brown. Like this is how you want to play defense on this person. And like, even like if RPI does something really good against Brandeis or Brandeis does something really good against RPI, like taking that and kind of running with it for your own team, I think is going to be big. Yeah, I think a reason I want to see these teams stay out of card trouble, aside from the fact that play cleanly, <laughs> is see what momentum, where momentum takes these teams. Because I think the last time at least Brown and Brandeis played, we saw like momentum just like get shot every five minutes. Yeah, that is like the toughest thing to watch as a, a spectator is when it starts to get to a standstill. It's like if there's really good like defensive stops, it's mm-hmm. kind of cool as somebody who like really likes the defense side. Um, but, you know, when there's not a goal scored for some time, it, it starts to get a little tough. Um, one thing I also think, not even like necessarily just like from the player standpoint, but like from a coaching standpoint, right? Like for Brandeis or RPI, one of you is going to have to play three straight games. And so not even from just like, oh, if we're going to win or not, like it's also just really good experience to like, mm-hmm. how are we going to manage lines? Like going back to like, when are your more like depth players going to get in? When are you like running your starting line? Not to the ground, but like longer. But close. Yeah, but close. Um, and so it really is, I think, like, how are you going to manage who is playing how many minutes, given that like you might be playing three back to back games? And so I think that's like kind of an underrated part of the game and something that like mm-hmm. I really enjoy is like, oh, like how can you strategically use your players to get the most out of them? and pick up those wins so like you know a a good thing for the the coaches of those teams you're you're on you know the the public stage as well to see if you're gonna (laughs) perform just as much as your players so you know we'll see how that one goes um i think it'll be an exciting weekend overall um we've talked about how good harvard is but i genuinely do think these three teams like i think it could like honestly you know you flip a coin and one of them is gonna win Um, I don't think there's one team that's so far and away better in beating, chasing, Mm -hmm. seeking that like it's not feasible for any one of these teams to, you know, make a clean win or, you know, split games as the day goes. Yeah, I think for the bowl games at the least, I don't think they're going to split. I think that a team is going to go 2-0. And based off of kind of what we've seen out of these teams more recently, I think it will be Brandeis. I think Brandeis is going to take the bowl and then advance to play Harvard in the D1 championship. I also probably expect that, you know, a a little piece of me is always hoping RPI wins, but I feel like given how Brandeis has played them like officially this year, and it was kind of a blow in Brandeis's favor. I think it'll be a lot closer than that. I think if Brandeis went into it thinking like, Oh, we're just going to stomp them. That's ill-advised and probably would lead to an upset. Um, but I fully agree. I think Brandeis probably takes it 2-0. Close games. 
Um, oh, very close. Yeah, very, I think very close. this could be, I think they could easily be next goal win situations. I would love it if they were. It would make that far more exciting. <laughs> but yeah, I also do think like if RPI wins game one, I think it's a good shot for them to win game two too. Mm -hmm. I think both of these teams are teams that can kind of get rattled when you know stuff goes south. And so losing a game, I think, mentally is tough to then like recover and come back from and so i wouldn't be surprised whoever wins game one yeah. takes game two as well and then i think going into the brown robin featuring brown i think if i think rpi i think rpi takes the game for brandeis though i think if they have to play brown in the back-to-back -back sequence of this weekend i think brown could take the win and not for any reason other than this was a very close game a couple weeks ago and brown is fresh yeah i almost feel like because the games were so close and then it just like like brown just like lost there at the end i really do feel like if it's brandy's having to play yeah like three back-to-back -back mm -hmm. games like brown is going to want to capitalize like immediately mm -hmm. off of that and honestly even if like they do get the the buy i feel like playing such a close game with a team that is so good mm -hmm. like I think it's just like, you know, it makes you a little hungry to like, you know, get that win mm -hmm. and kind of beat them out. It gives you some um, confidence, like, oh, we can do this. And especially because they have such fast players. Like, Will Richardson is probably the fastest yeah, player yeah. in the Northeast. If you're gassed and Will Richardson's running at you, being shifty and stuff and making cuts, like, it's it's, it's so probably over for you and your team. <laughs> yeah. I think, however, though, I do think if Brandeis has the game break, I think they take the win. Just off of just riding, like, probably a high of the morning if they go 2-0, and and then also a lunch break. Yeah. One thing I feel like we, we haven't talked about, I, I agree, I think in the end it will probably be Brown picking up one win or none. Um, but, like, all of these teams have, like, at least one, some have more, like, phenomenal seekers. So you mm -hmm. have, like, Adojo, Will Richardson, um, Eli and Rowan. Eli and Rowan, yeah. Okay, I forgot which other team in my head was thinking of Harvard. Yeah, you have all these, like, phenomenal seekers. Unfortunately, as, you know, I think you said earlier, is usually the case in the college game. Most of them are also incredibly important for the success come seekers on pitch. And so I think it really all, again, a lot of it's going to be coaching decisions. And that's always frustrating as a player, but exciting as kind of a spectator. It's like, oh, well, this team, would have, you know, it's always like the hypotheticals, like, oh, what if, like this person, well, whatever. Um, and so I think it just like makes it a little bit more exciting because like, it's like, oh, well, you know, that's a, a change you can make for nationals, but it is just really good exposure to like mm -hmm. figure out how you want to run lines, especially against such good teams. And going into a two-day <laughs> tournament. Yeah, exactly. Um, so in terms of predictions, that's kind of how we're thinking. Um, we wouldn't, you know, be from Boston if we weren't also going to plug MLQ tryouts coming up this weekend. Um, so the Sunday, March 17th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at Harvard's Cumnock Fields. Uh, you can register at the link in this description of the video. Uh, <laughs> just <laughs> Um, so yeah, you can register there to, to get set up for that. It's a really good experience and exposure for all players of all levels to at least come try out, uh, see what the sport at like the highest levels are all about. Um, so yeah, can't recommend that enough as well. Can't really recommend spending the summer with us enough. <laughs> um, so thanks for joining us. Um, make sure you tune into the MQC Facebook page on Saturday to catch this weekend's game starting at 10 a.m. And we'll see you next week with a recap and a preview of the following week.